Hey, what's up guys? Best in West here, and today I'm not going to be covering PvP content. Instead, I'm going to be talking about the top 10 things I did when I was in Tokyo. Now, many of you might be wondering why I'm doing this. Why Tokyo? Well, as many of you guys also know, Japan is hosting their own GoFest in Yokohama. Yokohama is southwest of Tokyo, but I'm pretty sure if you're going to GoFest, you're also going to check out a lot of things in Tokyo. So, this is just a list of things that I was able to do and I found very interesting or fun. Um, but there's also a lot of things that I didn't get to check out. So I'm going to compile a list of things that I didn't get to check out, but are on my list of things to do next time I do go visit Japan. So without further ado, let's get to the video. Number 10, Joy Polis. Joy Polis is an indoor amusement park inside a shopping mall in Odaiba. Don't expect any big roller coasters though. It has one coaster and a lot of rides that feature VR and simulations. They used to have an initial D simulation, but it has since been taken out sadly. Tripolis also has a huge arcade as well as some carnival games. If this sounds fun to you, I suggest you check this place out when you're in Odaiba. Number 9. Tsukiji Fish Market the old Tsukiji fish market used to be where restaurants and local establishments used to buy their fresh seafood super early in the morning, but that has since moved due to the construction for the 2020 Olympic Games. Now what is left is probably what you were more interested in anyways, the food. If the street food was what you were going for, that is still there. You can get almost any type of seafood here from uni, salmon, otoro, and I think I even saw some puffer fish. There are lots of stalls and can get crowded at times, so I suggest you go really early to avoid the tours that drop by. Number 8. Ginza At first, I didn't think I would enjoy Ginza. It's a pretty modern location and lots of high-end shopping. If you're like me, you like to have nice, affordable clothing that doesn't break the bank. Fortunately, Ginza also offers the flagship stores of Goo, Muji, and a 12-floor Uniqlo. It also has pretty good food places along with some cool stationary stores such as Loft and Itoria. If you're looking to shop, Ginza might be a place for you. Number 7. Ikebukuro Another place you might want to check out if you want to go shopping is Ikebukuro. Ikebukuro is a combination of Shibuya and Akihabara. When I went, the main reason was to go to Sunshine City, the mall that the Pokemon Mega Center is in. This isn't the largest Pokemon Center in Tokyo, but it can definitely be your stop if you are limited on time. Namja Town is also in Sunshine City. I wasn't able to go inside myself, but I heard it's somewhat of a food theme park. If you want to take a break from all the shopping, Ikebukuro has plenty of arcades just outside of Sunshine City as well. When you work up an appetite, you have several options as well. I suggest checking out Utekia Ramen but there will almost always be a decent line, so try to go during off times or be ready to wait. Number 6. Shibuya Shibuya is home to the world famous Shibuya Crossing. Every time the crosswalk light goes on, it's said that thousands of people cross. Shibuya is also home to some great shopping and fun activities such as karaoke, video games, and various nightlife options. You may want to go visit the famous Hachiko statue as well, but try to go early on a weekday so that you will get a great picture with the famous little dog. Number 5. Akihabara Akihabara is home to a Japanese nerd culture, manga, anime, video games, and so much more. When I was there, we spent the whole day there just checking out all the stores, playing video games, and just enjoying the atmosphere. The stores can get pretty cramped, so I hope you're not too claustrophobic. There are tons of arcades here and have every type of game. UFO catchers, rhythm games, and my personal favorite, racing, specifically Initial D. Akihabara is also like a pilgrimage to the birthplace of video game and anime culture, a place that I knew I had to go to. Number 4. The Imperial Palace the Imperial Palace was a place that I wish I had scheduled more time for. I love learning about the history and culture of the country that I'm visiting. Although you can't go inside the actual palace itself, you can go around the palace grounds. One of the main draws of the Imperial Palace is the garden. This is where I went when I visited. There's an app that you can download and it's like having a guided tour when you're out walking. 
This place was beautiful and filled with so much history. It's a nice change of pace from the typical hustle and bustle of Tokyo. I highly recommend spending a whole day in this area as there's tons of other things to do and I will for sure be making another trip here next time I'm in Tokyo. Number 3. Funji. The only food item on my list and it is a must try. If there's one place I recommend you go eat at, it's Funji. Funji serves skamen. What is skamen? It's dipping noodles. Noodles are served to the side with a bowl of dense broth. You dip the noodles into the broth and eat it. At first, I was hesitant, but after taking my first bite, I was a believer. I think it was my favorite meal in Tokyo. Funji is located in Shinjuku and pretty much always has a line, so make sure you get there early. Even with the line, this place is 100% worth it. It's definitely on my must go to next time I'm back in Japan. Number two, Pokemon Center D. Come on, you knew it was coming. The largest Pokemon Center in Tokyo. This place is huge with lots of cool things to see. Located on the 5th floor, you take an elevator up and are welcomed by a giant Snorlax, Mew, and Pikachu. They have a Pokemon Cafe here as well, but make sure you make reservations if you want to check it out, as most of the time, you won't be able to walk in. As for the Pokemon Center itself, all of the mainline Pokemon games are lined up on one wall chronologically that leads you straight into the store. I think I spent a few hours in there. As a Pokemaniac, I was like a kid in a candy store. Plushies, keychains, clothing, cookies, you name it, they probably Pokefied it somehow. I hope you have enough space in your luggage. Number 1. Team Lab Planets Team Lab Planets was the most amazing experience I had when I was in Tokyo. Although Team Lab Borderless may be the more popular one, I think Team Lab Planets is the more enjoyable one. I went to both and each have their own positives, but if I were to pick one, Planets is the way to go. It's kind of hard to explain exactly what Team Lab does, but I'll try. They create an art museum where they infuse both physical and digital mediums to give the audience a sensory experience. How did I do? If that didn't make sense, just take a look at the pictures and videos that I took and you can kind of understand what it is. You buy tickets for a certain time spot and you move along a path. I think this is great as it allows you to experience everything there is without having to get lost moving from one exhibit to another. The whole experience was very interactive. There are times when you are falling down, getting your feet wet, pushing balloons. There was never really a time where I felt I wasn't looking around or just standing there. There was always something to look at or feel. I'm hoping to do a longer video that will focus on this later, but if you haven't gone to Team Lab Planets, I highly suggest you do so as it is a limited time exhibit that will only last until the fall of 2020. Okay, so those were my top 10 things to do in Tokyo. Now, like I mentioned, there were some things that I'd like to go and check out next time in, I'm in Tokyo. Two of those things are very similar to each other and it just didn't fit in our schedule. That place, those places are Yanaka Ginza and Tsunamachi Ginza. Both of them are kind of old school feel, old town feel, um, less touristy. They're both walking streets with a lot of street food. So I love eating street food and those are two places that I definitely want to go check out next time I'm in Tokyo. Another place that I really want to check out is Tokyo Tower. Now, a lot of people say going to Tokyo Tower might not be completely worth it, but it's still something that I want to go check out at least one time. Um, it was kind of out of, a, out of the way um, for the other places that we wanted to go check out. So it just didn't make our list this past year. Next time plan to go to Tokyo Tower. And last but not least is the Saksa Sumida area. Now Asakusa is a very touristy area during the day. I heard that if you want to visit Asakusa during the evening it gets a lot quieter, less people. Sensoji Temple is much much more quiet and the lights just make that place stand out so much more. So that's something that I really want to go check out in Saksa. Now Sumida Park looks beautiful from the pictures that I've seen so I'm hoping to get to go check that out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get to go watch the cherry blossoms there but um, the park alone right on the river, river bank looks amazing and Tokyo Sky Tree is 
Pokemon Stump is a great shopping area, and they also have a Pokemon Center. That's one of the Pokemon Centers that I did not get to go check out, so I'm hoping to make a trip to Skytree, check out the shops and the shopping there, and um, maybe buy some more Pokemon things. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful in planning your trip to Tokyo. If you did, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Best on West. I'll catch you guys later.